going to show you how to apply the slider and the buckle to your Huxley dungarees. So you're going to take the, the strap, we're looking at the top side of it as you can see all over the top stitching. So that's the top with the top stitching and that's the back. Then you're going to take it into the first opening or section and then thread it through over the center bar. And then when you do the second one, like I'm doing at the moment, you can just push it back to be in line with the first one or you can just push it back out of the way for now. So some buckles have only got one center bar, in which case you're just going to thread it in and over the center bar like that and then it's going to go towards the back. This one has a double bar. So we're going to put it into the first section. We're going to put it over those two bars. And then we're going to do one extra step, which will be to thread it through the back opening. So just give yourself some space. put it in the center section and then this slider has got a little bit of give so I'll just push it down okay now no, this is the tricky part trying to get it through that space so you can take an awl or something sharp just to get get it going center and out. That looks pretty even. Okay. And then if you want to loosen it to like um, adjust the strap length you can just first pull the top of it. If you need a bit of help you can take something Shop. first pull the top of it and then after that pull the back okay so to do it through the back of the slider we're going to give ourselves some room sliding the slider back and then take the strap and put it in the back behind the bar If for some reason you feel like your strap is way too long, you can just go ahead and trim off of this end before you secure it. So now we want to secure this end so that it doesn't unravel and also that it's secure that it doesn't come out. So we're basically going to sew it close so that it's, it's going to create a loop that's catching this you can see it's the, it's the loop on the inside here, so it's going to catch that bar. So to hide the raw edges, you can just turn it under by one centimeter, 
and then make sure you're doing this towards the back of the strap. You don't want to do it towards the front of the strap because you're not actually going to see these stitches from the front. And you can secure that with clips or a pin and then take it to the sewing machine and sew a row of stitches on the edge here and then another one that's further down so that those raw edges are enclosed. If you need to use a zipper fit for this side or you can do change the position of your, your needle but I've found with this three centimeters you can actually just use your regular foot. So I've done the stitching on the other side. You can see that's what it's going to look like. This is the front of the strap. This is the back of the strap. And the stitching is on the back of the strap. We're going to apply our jeans buttons now and to do that we're going to use our buttonholes as a placement guide. We're going to line up on the edge and we're going to line up the top and the bottom of the waistband and then to place the button we're going to do it about a quarter of an inch, six millimeters in from the end. So if you think of the shank of the button that's going to settle into this corner right and then essentially that is where we want the button to sit on the other side okay so you can mark it with a, a pen or chalk or a pin um, if you want I'm actually just going to put my all there and then make a hole okay and then I can just push that to the side. I've got my hole here that I made with all. This is probably not going to be big enough to put the back of my button in. I mean, I can check. Sometimes you can sort of push it in and then just give it a tug. Or you can just use something that's a bit thicker than this, like a skewer or a knitting needle or something like that. I usually just use this little tool I've got that it actually came with my rivet set. And what it does is you hammer it in and it just cuts out that little, little hole. I'm just going to place it over where I want the hole to be and then as I hammer it I just sort of uh, rotate it so that it cuts evenly all right so that will make a hole that's a little bit bigger I don't know if you can see the hole but now the back is going to fit through very easily. I find the best way to hammer in the button is to put the button down on a smooth surface or you can put a piece of cloth here to protect it because um, we don't want to hammer on the button because that's going to scratch the surface so we want to put that face down and then you just take your um, back make sure that the back is coming through to the front not the other way around and then you just place it into the little hole. There's a tiny little hole. Okay, you're gonna just place it into the hole. And then I sort of just balance it or hold it on either side just to secure it. And then make sure this back is level. And then just hit it, just a couple of confident wax. Um, you're not going to hit it so much that it splits the, the shank of the button, but you're not going to hit it too little so that it's still loose. So I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so that has made it that it's almost there. Okay, so I can see it's still a little bit, there's still a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so I'm just going to check 
just feels like it needs one more whack. Maybe two. Okay, now I can feel it's completely flush with the fabric. If you hit it more now to secure it more, um, there's a very good chance that it's going to split the shank of the button. Ask me how I know. So, we did it. So let's try and button this up. So you can go ahead and do all three on the side, three on the other side, and two on the bib. 